Cyberpunk 2077. You ever go on YouTube without an ad blocker? That's how it feels to be in Night City. I've played this game a lot since launch, and now it seems they finally consider it finished. So now we can finally review the fucking thing. I've put more hours into this game than anyone has any business putting into this game. But here's the thing, I loved Cyberpunk even when it was broken, even when it was a complete fucking mess. It did ruin some important moments though. I remember at one point a character dies and it's meant to be this like crazy emotional moment but the problem was the guy was T-posing. No, that Tetris block was my friend. It doesn't quite hit the same emotionally, does it? But now most of that shit's fixed. Every so often you'll see someone flash a T-pose but it's much more subtle, you know? Now the T-poses, they're just a little bit more tasteful, you know, a little bit more classy. But actually the bugs were a lot of fun. It was like a museum. I say bring them back, honestly. I remember one mission that was completely broken. My neighbor was suicidal and I had to convince him not to commit suicide. Not to commit suicide. But then after introducing myself I I kind of just wandered off and then the quest bugged. It wasn't expecting me to do that for some reason and so I couldn't speak to him anymore. So he was just stood in his doorway for the rest of the game right next to my house. But you know, he didn't kill himself, so... So yeah, I love this game, I've played it a ton. Now I'm gonna share some of the game's biggest strengths, but also some of the game's biggest weaknesses. A lot of the game's biggest weaknesses. The Life Pass trailer gives the illusion that each of these choices will be their own huge stories in different parts of the city. This was actually a clever little marketing trick that we like to call lying, bullshitting. So many detail in each path. Looks like three different games. Choosing Nomad, Street, or Corpo will be the hardest choice I ever made in my entire life. Looks like three different 200 hour playthroughs. Edit, game came out, never mind. The way they made it sound like choices would actually affect the game world significantly. There are choices you can make in the game, but the extent to which choices matter was heavily over exaggerated. So many options, so many possibilities and each will have consequences that will ripple through the game world and your story. And that's just one quest. Just one quest? That was absolutely right. I think they said that shit on purpose because that is like the only quest where you really have a lot of freedom about how you go about it. Yeah, there was some clever marketing there too. I'm surprised they got away with that shit. <laughs> just outright lie. Fucking sick marketing strategy. We're just gonna bullshit. <laughs> He's fine, probably. There he is. Talk! <laughs> he is fine, I told you. Cyberpunk is a hedonistic world where despite coming forward so far technologically, humanity itself has gone way the fuck backwards. Every aspect of the game is designed with this in mind. It's not just some line made up by marketing to make the world sound more interesting than it actually is. Advertisements in this world are fucking everywhere and they're the most horny, violent fucking things you've ever seen. They're all designed to appeal to humanity's baser instincts, which is a reflection of the society itself. Human life in Night City has very little value. Everywhere you go, you see people doing horrible things to each other just to get ahead, just to make a bit of money. But here's the thing about such a world, such a horrible place. It's very fucking interesting. It's very exciting. Every quest, you know you're about to see some interesting shit. Probably not some nice shit, but some interesting shit. The people around Night City don't feel like people. I throw a knife on the ground, they run away screaming. I throw a punch, they run away screaming. Surely in such a crime ridden place, people would be used to this shit. They'd see me fucking kill someone, and they would just walk away saying I didn't see nothing. He was the best guy around. What about the people he murdered? What so murder? Weird. Look at these huge tough guys running away because some lady threw one punch. The NPCs end up being really comical, which I think detracts from the atmosphere of the city itself. People flop around with zero self-preservation at all, cops start lobbing grenades at you for fucking nothing. Cops will shout just random police sounding phrases that don't even apply to the situation at all. I'm taking fire! No you fucking ain't. In GTA 4 I can call the cops, then start a fight, get them to punch me in front of the cops to get them arrested, and then steal the card they were arrested with and throw it in the ocean. In Cyberpunk, you can't quite do that. <laughs> Doesn't quite work. <laughs> Jill. 
there is so another thing is that there is so much fucking reading if you want to understand more about the world itself. Listen, reading is fine. I don't mind reading. I read a lot in Skyrim, but how your reading is presented matters a lot. When you play Morrowind, that game is entirely reading. There's no voice acting, or very little voice acting. They left the voice acting for only the most important dialogue. You Enwa! So it's like reading 16 books in one game, but it doesn't feel like reading. You can play all of Morrowind, and it doesn't even bother you that it's so much reading. Because it's all important conversational stuff. And in Skyrim, the books are pretty cool too. They had a cool aesthetic. I'd always bring them home, sit by the fire, and sit there and read these cool books I found. But in this game, opening a shard feels like this. I'm sure that there's a more engaging way they could come up with to get this information into the player's brain. The music, the ambient music, the battle music, it's all fantastic. But the radio walks a fine line between this is great and turn that shit off. Maybe I'm giving the game too much credit, but the radio feels intentionally strange to reinforce that Night City is a world different from our own. But there is a ton of really good music in this game. My biggest critique with the game itself is how little there is to do in Night City. As far as actual gameplay, 90% of your interactions with the city is just killing the residents of it. Like, why are there BD salesmen, but every single BD just happens to be incompatible? Why are there so many food vendors when food is so useless? I still put it in my pockets anyway, but it is useless. I never eat it, I never sell it, I never bother with it. Why put so much love into the marketplaces when your interactions with them are so shallow? <laughs> Uh-oh. Cops are coming. Act natural. Fuck. They put a ton of work into making sure different parts of the city actually feel different. They put so much effort into this fucking city. None of it feels lazy. Unfinished? Absolutely. But lazy? No. Anyone who calls it lazy should have their right to an opinion revoked because they're clearly not using it properly. Also, I see a lot of people making fun of the name Night City. It's called Night because it was named after a guy named Richard Knight. It's not just called Night City because, oh, it's nighttime here sometimes, or something stupid. I think the fast travel in this game is a bit of a mess. There's fast travel places fucking everywhere on every corner. It feels like driving was like a second-hand thought in a lot of ways. And then there's the train stations, but they don't really make any sense either. I know they're not train stations, but I think most people- I don't know what else to call them but I think most people's experiences with those train stations would be to use it once just to see what it's like and then never use it again. The size and the layout of the city is destroyed in the player's mind when suddenly they can just fast travel to any part of it. For an example, Pan Am lives in the middle of fucking nowhere, so actually having to drive out into the desert to see her would reinforce this in the player's mind, that distance. Every time you're driving out there, you'd think, fuck's sake, Pan Am, what are you doing out here? Instead, they just have a fast travel thing right inside the Aldecado camp. Why? Uh, like, how does that make sense in-universe? Is it like a taxi thing? Is it like a... Uh, one of those flying things? I don't... It doesn't really seem to make any sense. And I think on the map, it even says... It just says fast travel. Like, they're not even trying to pretend. It's a gorgeous city, too. So driving through it, I think, is part of the experience. Nothing pulls you out of the world more than a fat fucking loading screen. Now, some of you might say, But I have a life. I don't want to just drive into the desert 16 times. I think you probably have a good point, actually. Never mind. This time, I played on the hardest difficulty. It was generally a very good experience, but there are a few fights that are just a lot like this. Do it, baby. Make it clean. Damn. Ooh. Ah. A, fair a fair kill. kill. That said, if there's ever a setting where getting shot in the face a hundred times makes sense, it's gonna be cyberpunk. You also die very fast on the hardest difficulty, but I will say it makes everything to do with the combat way more engaging. You end up looking through the entire perk tree looking for all the best perks, and you end up really feeling every small difference that they make. And every bit of money you get can be used for upgrading your cyberware as well, so now you suddenly care about that side of things too. Whereas on normal, I barely upgraded my guy. I just got the big jump and the mantis blades because they were fucking cool, and I didn't really bother with anything else. So I remember sometimes my game would just suddenly go slow motion, and I, I had no idea why. Whereas on very hard, I'm analyzing every perk and every piece of equipment so much, I know exactly what every single little buff like that does and where it comes from. On the hardest difficulty, these skull fellas are a pain in the ass. You're much better off sneaking in and taking them out silently because that's an insta kill. It encourages the meshing of like stealth gameplay with normal gunfights, which I think is really cool. Because on normal, you would just run in and shoot everyone. 
But on the hardest difficulty, that extra shit that you have to give makes combat way better. That said, for a first playthrough, absolutely play it through on normal, I would say. Um, but the hardest difficulty is great for a second playthrough. Getting the double jump legs and the dodge ability makes the game much easier, but also much more fun. I've been dash jumping around for about 30 hours now on this character, and I'm still not even nearly bored of it. As far as the gameplay is concerned, the game has a fantastic feeling of progression as your character gets stronger and stronger. You start off and you're just a guy, but then by the end of the game, you're killing everyone in one shot and jumping over buildings and shit. You absolutely go mental. It's very cool. It's a lot like Morrowind, actually. I don't know why I keep bringing up Morrowind. I've, I've played other games, I promise. I remember when the game first came out, the fist fighting was fucking impossible. You either had to build your entire character around fist fighting or use a glitch to sneak a sword in. So I would sneak a sword in and then I'd be hacking at them with a katana and they would still be beating my fucking ass. But now all the combat and everything to do with it is quite good I would say actually. It doesn't have Apex Legends levels of refinement but that's kind of an unfair comparison anyway so. Why is he allowed a fucking one two three four octuple Rocket launcher. I'm not even allowed my double jump. I can't even fucking they confiscate my tendons I need to speak to the manager I feel like a lot of studios don't understand or care about how important characters are if you care about the characters You begin to care about the world they're in the story They're a part of the decisions you make and how it affects those characters. It's very important I think if a game has characters. I don't like nothing kills my desire to play that game more Maybe I just need friends or something, but having good characters is something I really appreciate. We've got Johnny. Johnny's funny because his entire gimmick is just being a massive fucking asshole, but then everyone in the city just happens to like him anyway. And me too, I like him a lot as well. Judy is the best character in any video game, full stop. Here's Johnny describing her. She's all over the place, refuses to take the door, jumps out a window, then acts all surprised when she gets hurt. She sounds like a fucking idiot, but really, that behavior is very human, especially when you actually see her in the story and you see what happens and all that. I thought she was done really well. Initially with Pan Am, she gave me the silent treatment because I wouldn't kill some people, and I was like, man, I hate this woman. But she turns out to be one of the best characters in the game in my opinion. I think with her, you get out what you put in. If you just do the bare minimum, you won't like her much, but if you do all the quests, by the end of that, you're gonna like her a lot. I've never romanced her before, maybe that would change my mind, but I doubt it. The romances are locked to your character's gender, which makes it kind of pointless to play as a male because you can only date Judy by being female. Claire, I thought was kind of stupid. She enters a race where the objective is to kill people and then her husband gets killed and then she's like, no, that's unforgivable. It's only okay when I kill people. Like, how does that make any fucking sense? I get it. If someone kills your husband, you'd be angry, I reckon. But you both signed up for it. If she really cared about him, she would have just hid his fucking car keys. Takamura is underrated and needed more quests. Jackie was likeable, but he needed more quests. River Dress is fucking stupid and needed more quests. You might see where I'm going with this. A lot of the characters could have used a few more quests, in my opinion. No my implants, including the black market stuff. Die, children! I was not gonna stop. I was not gonna stop. That's the game forcing me to. I've got places to be. The focus on characters is reflected by the sheer effort they put into animations during quests. For an example, Maiko has to point out which one of these guys is the guy we have to kill. And she doesn't just point at him, she ashes her cigarette on his head. I love that. And now even if you've never played the game, after seeing that animation, you now know a lot about her character. There isn't a single quest where the characters you're with don't have some unique animation just for that, that one specific moment. Meanwhile in like Bethesda games, a character will do like some special animation and I'm like, whoa, fucking hell, they busted out the special animation for that one. Like when Dance flips his hat. It's like, it's so impressive that people clip it and put it on YouTube, this one little animation. Meanwhile in Cyberpunk, it's every single quest. I find brain dances do a bit of a character arc where you start off and you're like, wow, brain dances are fucking cool. But then eventually it turns into, oh, for fuck's sake, not another brain dance. There are some cool brain dances, but they do make you feel a bit trapped sometimes. Okay, we spent hundreds of hours making the most gorgeous graphics ever in a video game. All right, and I'll take them all away for fucking half the missions. And another character arc happens with the slang of the world. Initially, I would hear the word choom, and I would think, God, that sounds so fucking bad. I am never going to get used to that. But then I did get used to it, and now I actually really like all the slang. 
It's just another little thing that sets this world apart from all the other worlds. I enjoy the huge emphasis on character customization. I think more excuses to see your character would have been really cool. But that said, I actually don't think there should be a third person mode. It's the difference between I'm interacting with this vending machine and my character is interacting with this vending machine. Third person pulls you out of your character's head. Literally. I think they only added third person to driving to make it easier. Because sometimes you can't see shit. Sometimes driving first person could be so fucking cool though. V, can you reply to this guy? He just sends you so many messages. You send this many messages, they don't even send one back. It gets embarrassing after a while. I get the sense a lot of the dishonesty in the marketing was a misalignment between vision and reality. They wanted to make the game as they promised, but couldn't probably for a lot of reasons. So is it the game they promised in the trailers? Fuck no. But it's still a truly brilliant game. There's tons of interiors, everywhere is meticulously designed, very few loading screens, gorgeous graphics and lighting, the parkour, the animations are gorgeous, the city is gorgeous, the Johnny is gorgeous, and a huge storyline with some of the best characters in gaming in the last decade. Making this vid has been an absolute lifestyle choice for me the last few weeks. So I hope you enjoyed, please check out my other vids, thank you for watching, bye bye. Also, I know I said I'd review Pong next, uh, but that was a clever marketing trick of my own actually.